The words I do are probably the most significant words any couple can say to each other. In October, gay marriage became legal in North Carolina. And since then, nearly 500 same-sex couples have tied the knot in Wake County alone. Next week on the national level, the Supreme Court will finally take up gay marriage. WNCN's political reporter Bo Minnick joins us live from Raleigh with a closer look at what's at stake. Bo. Hi there, Sharon and Sean. You know, the one area where we could find agreement between those who oppose same-sex marriage and those in favor of it is that both of them wanted to see it addressed by the Supreme Court. Well, on Tuesday, it will be. And rest assured, there's going to be plenty of eyes here in the triangle that are keeping a close watch. He doesn't fit in the castle? No. no. Spending time playing with the kids is an important part of any parent's life. To us, it's just normal every day. It's just like how I grew up as a kid except that we've got two dads instead of a mom and a dad. In October, Billy Traurig married his partner of 10 years, Todd Mazingo. Traurig had already adopted their two children, 14-year-old Javon and 3-year-old Avi. But Mozingo couldn't legally adopt them too until they were married. I would no longer be told that our children couldn't see the doctor because I wasn't the legal parent. October 17th, that changed. It felt like reality. It felt like what we had been waiting for all these years. I now pronounce you married. You may kiss. The pair joined hundreds of other couples who married in the days following rulings by two federal court judges that overturned a constitutional amendment banning gay marriage in North Carolina. We never even contemplated going somewhere else to get married. What does Mickey put in here? Mozingo and Traurig are married, but they tell us the fight is far from over. Right now, their marriage would not be recognized if they traveled to 13 other states. We feel that it is time and we feel confident that the Supreme Court will settle this issue down. On Tuesday, the highest court in the land will hear a case that challenges a lower court opinion upholding a gay marriage ban in Michigan, Ohio, Kentucky, and Tennessee. The day of the argument is going to be a very exciting day. Chapter Chapel Hill Mayor Mark Kleinschmidt, who himself is gay, is an attorney who represented plaintiffs in one of the cases that overturned the ban in North Carolina. Contemplating this day that we, and I'm confident is going to come, just a few years ago was just unthinkable. Well, I'm hopeful that we'll get uh, a decision that will uh, give us some certainty. North Carolina's Republican legislative leaders are fighting to uphold the marriage amendment. Since the federal court's rulings, the state has appealed the decision. We've been asking how much those lawyer fees cost. Senate President Pro Tem Phil Berger's office provided us invoices, the most recent dated February 25th. They show the state has been billed a little under $100,000. We had set aside $300,000 uh, out of the Attorney General's budget because the Attorney General refused to, uh, to defend the law. Attorney General Roy Cooper, a Democrat, said he would not appeal the decision overturning the same-sex marriage ban. I think many uh, Christian leaders as well as various Christian organizations have prepared their hearts for the worst. Reverend Mark Creech is the executive director of the Christian Action League of North Carolina. He tells us there is fear among the Christian community that the Supreme Court will rule in favor of allowing gay marriage. You can't change something of such fundamental import as marriage without affecting every home. We are no longer a nation of the people, by the people, and for the people. We become a nation of the judges, by the judges, and for the judges. Tammy Fitzgerald with the North Carolina Values Coalition questions the impact that same-sex unions would have on other aspects of marriage. If the structure and foundation for marriage as the union of one man and one woman is struck down, then there's no foundation upon which a state could say polygamy is illegal. That is an argument that people um, of other races and people who were attempting to marry interracially 50 years ago heard. Reverend Creech, meanwhile, questions the impact it will have on families. God made it so that children would have a father, so that children would have a mother. That's natural, and that's how it should be. We and a lot of other families have adopted children who don't have a mother and father already. I think it's really attracted a great deal of, of our attention as a nation.
UNC constitutional law professor Bill Marshall tells us the Supreme Court will likely take as much time as it can before making a decision. The Supreme Court has a flair for the dramatic, and they like to save their most dramatic cases to the last day of the term. That would mean a ruling in June. Okay, show me how it goes. For Mozingo and Trarig, they're hoping it's one their family can celebrate. It's not we're optimistic and pretty as confident as we can be that the Supreme Court will come down on the side of marriage equality. Are you sleepy? Say good to daddy. daddy. And the North Carolina Values Coalition filed its opinion in a brief that will go to the Supreme Court. They also will be participating in a March for Marriage in D.C. on Saturday. Now, as for here at the General Assembly, I asked Senator Berger what would happen if the Supreme Court rules in favor of allowing gay marriage across the country. And he said, really, at this point, he would have to consult with the attorneys that it's still just too early to tell. Guys, back to you. Excellent in-depth story, Bo. Thank you. And be sure to join Bo Minnick on social media for a conversation about gay marriage. You can ask him questions on Facebook or tweet him using the handle at Bo Minnick.